Are you looking for a portable power station and solar generator? If so, you've found the right video. Today, we'll be having a look at a Blue Eddy EB55, and we'll also do a comparison to a Jackery 1000, so stay tuned. Welcome everyone, Kelly here from KB Auto Tech Adventure. It's the weekend and we're out camping. I got my 2020 Tacoma here with me and what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be putting this Blue Eddy EB55 to the test. So anyways, if that interests you in any way, please stay tuned. So what we have here is the Blue Eddy EB55. This is a 537 watt hour power supply unit. So I've already gone ahead and opened this unit and charged it up. So anyways, I just wanted to take a quick look at the contents. Some of the wrapping has already been removed. But anyways, this is a basic idea of what you're gonna get in this box. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice box too. It's got a nice carrying handle and whatnot. So the first thing that we're gonna get here is obviously we're gonna get all the wiring and connectors. So what we have inside here is the power supply unit or the charging unit. We have a 12 volt plug in. I'm actually not quite sure what this one is. I'll have to uh, check the um, check the manual, check the instructions. I'm not familiar with what this plug is here. I'm sure some of you guys will let me know, but that is what we have inside the unit. Well, we have it out of the box. Here's what it looks like. One of the first things you're gonna notice, obviously, is the nice square design. If you're packing it on top of things or in and about things, it doesn't have an awkward shape. One of the things that I do like about this unit is that it's a pretty square unit. Uh, what you'll notice is also that the handle folds away. So that's pretty important. Uh, something like the Jackery, which I have inside the vehicle and we'll take a look at the moment. Uh, that is a fixed handle. It's sort of awkward. You can never really put anything on top of it. That is nice. So it has that nice flat surface on top. Now, one of the reasons why it has that is it has a 15 watt wireless phone charger. So you can go ahead and you can place your phone on top and it is going to charge your phone, but at least you know your battery won't be dying. So that's one nice thing there. But let's get right into the power input. So what you're going to see here is that we have two power inputs. So this is for uh, two different adapters and two different cords. So you can uh, plug it in and charge it in two different ways. So anyways, we're gonna have a look at the solar unit as well because I have that with me today. The next thing that we're gonna have a look at here quickly is the display. Uh, obviously the sun is very bright here. We can still see it quite good. In the dark, it actually has a nice blue color and uh, it looks pretty good. So we have our basically showing our usage of power in and power out on there as well. So we can go ahead and just press any of the buttons and that will bring up this, uh, basically this display right here. From there, we have all the different power outlets. What we have here is a 12 volt plug connecting anything that runs off your typical 12 volt cigarette style uh, plugins. So, and then you'll see we also have two more right there. From there, we have the AC output. Uh, obviously, it's pretty obvious we have four of those. Uh, it says 110 to 120 volts at 700 watts output. So that will run quite a few different components. Later on here today and tonight over the weekend, we are gonna try a host of different components and we'll see how that runs. Last but not least is we have the DC output. So basically all our USBs, uh, 5 volt, 3 amp, 5 volt, 3 amp, and the USB-A and USB-C. So we have those on there as well. Turning the unit uh, to the side, we basically don't really have anything in here, uh, just the side and we have some venting there. I, I believe that there's a fan in there. One thing that we're gonna notice right on the back is we have this LED light. Can't see it because the sun's shining brightly on it. You might be able to see that on the video. And we have a distress beacon as well. That's a nice little function that it has on there as well. And on this side, we have just another vent there as well. And that is it. Okay, so here we have both of the units. Obviously, this isn't a fair comparison in size to size, but we are looking for the functions. This Jackery unit is a 1000 watt hour, and this guy is just a 537 watt hour. So they're a little bit um, different in size capacity, obviously, but in functionality, uh, even if this was the larger one or vice versa, uh, they're basically built uh, the same throughout the ranges in reality. The most important thing uh, probably in this video is something I didn't even realize and I didn't even check myself. Obviously, I'm uh, you know an off-road, camping, overlanding kind of guy. Uh, we spend a lot of time outdoors. I have two rigs. I have my 2020 Tacoma and I have my 97 third gen 4Runner. So the reason why I use one of these portable units is because it is portable. I can put it into either one of my vehicles or we could take it car camping either way. To get back to what I was saying, the most important thing I could say in this video 
which I didn't do my own research. I actually just got this unit because I would say it was probably trendy and that is what everyone was just using at the time. And I was able to get a small discount from one of my local suppliers, sort of an industry deal just because of um, me being doing YouTube videos and whatnot. What I'm getting at here is the type of battery and how many cycles uh, they get. A Jackery unit, I believe, will only get approximately about a thousand cycles, where this Blue Eddy, it will get 2,500 plus. Now, to me, I mean, if you're going to compare, I mean, unless there was a drastically huge difference in pricing or something like that, there's no way I would buy a Jackery unit over a Blue Eddy. It just doesn't make sense in the long term. Um, you're going to get two and a half times more cycles out of this unit than you will out of that unit. So. For me, that is a very, very, very important function. So here we have the two units. So let's do a quick comparison. Like I mentioned before, it's not about size or capacity. It's about functions and build. What you'll notice right off the bat is a couple of different, different things, very similar in a way, but also some extras. So what you're gonna notice here, obviously both have display screens. The one thing that uh, the Blue Eddy uh, doesn't do that the Jackery does is it displays the battery uh, percentage in an actual number where this one goes in bars by 20% bars. In reality, once you know you're down to 20, it is what it is, it's getting low, but this one does give you the exact number so you would kind of know when it's gonna die, but let's face it, if it's dying, it's dying. Uh, both have the same inputs. This guy has a cover though, obviously. So if that means something to you or if you find that's important, uh, this does have a nice little cover. We're gonna go into the 110 volt plugins. Uh, obviously, Blue Eddy has four, Jackery only has three. When we go to the USB style plugins, uh, we only have three here as well. We have a quick charge and um, the USB C and the 110. So we have four here, obviously, and we have the separate one here. And we also have uh, two of these as well. So there's definitely a little bit of uh, more, more, you know, more charging availability, more functions there uh, you, that you can use. Like I mentioned earlier, obviously this guy has a fixed handle, so it's not that stackable. So, and with this, we have this nice handle. Okay, so we have power. Obviously we're gonna use that power up and we're gonna need to recharge these units. So obviously if you're out for the weekend, the only way you're really gonna be able to charge it is we have two functions. One, you can run it off your vehicle or we can run solar. We have a completely sunny day today. I have 200 watt solar units for both of these. So let's go ahead and let's compare and let's just see if one maybe pulls a little bit more solar in or if they even get their 200 like they're both listed as. So let's watch that now. If you remember earlier, I was mentioning I didn't know what this cord was for. That's actually because I hadn't opened the solar unit yet. This is the connector for the solar panel to the Blue Eddy unit. Looks very straightforward, sort of male, female, so you can't really get that wrong. This is the first time I'm even doing it. I didn't even look at it. So we'll get those two connected. So if you didn't quickly catch it earlier, like I said, I have two vehicles and two setups. So that's what I like about having the portability to being able to use uh, a portable unit to move it from vehicle to vehicle. Um, obviously, if you had one vehicle, you could look at doing something that's hardwired, uh, more you know, solid system that stays in your vehicle. I like the portable units. So what I'm going to be doing here, so this is my fridge. Uh, this is the unit that we use. Uh, it feeds uh, me and my wife and my son. You know, we can easily put three, four days worth of food in here and restock it as we need to, even some cool drinks and whatnot. So we'll charge it into both of these units and we'll see what the solar and just basically the, you know, the recycling unit of it all and how it's gonna pull and check the power. So I actually do have stuff in here. I mean, I have drinks, food for the weekend, uh, snacks, all kinds of stuff in here and it's quite cold. Let's plug it into the two units while the solar's going and let's just have a look at the numbers. So we switch cameras and let's quickly check the setups. Obviously we got the two solar setups, both supposed to be putting out 200 watts. The only problem I have here is that both of these units are pretty much charged now because I had them hooked up for a little bit. But anyways, let's have a quick look here. Um, so we're gonna have a look at this Blue Eddy unit. Obviously, okay, so here's the numbers if you can see those. So my fridge right now is pulling about 29 watts and the solar right now is pumping in about 58. Now, I would say that it would probably pull higher numbers if it was a lower charged. Uh, this thing is pretty much charged for the max at the moment. So I think it basically, um, the most important part that you can see here is that the fridge is pulling less than what that solar is putting out. So anyways, that's a, that's a good sign. So we do know that uh, 
it's going pretty good. Um, earlier I seen this thing was putting out over 120 watts. So it's rated at 200, but it was it was definitely cranking it in there. So anyways, let's plug it into the Jackery and let's have a look there. Well, we might have to come back and have a look at this. Uh, the reason being is the Jackery is 100% charged and the solar is not putting out, uh, well, it's not drawing anything right now. Uh, the output here, uh, it's bouncing around somewhere between about 42, uh, 36 uh, and the output so anyways we'll see as soon as this thing starts to draw down it's it'll trickle in some energy so we might have to um, yeah it is what it is so anyways it's time to get moving on I just pulled over we shot this video at this one spot here nice and quiet field beautiful around here it's pretty hot as well but anyways it's time to get moving on we're gonna visit a couple of different lakes then we're gonna get to the, our main camp for the weekend with some friends and we're gonna test this unit out we're gonna plug in a bunch of different units and uh, just power it up and just to see how it does and handles uh, basically overlanding for the weekend let's just see how this goes So we just got to the campground. I got my tent set up for the night. And I uh, got the inflatable kayak out. We're gonna go have a toodle around this lake. See maybe if we can quickly catch a fish or two. All right, well, it's late at night, getting ready to get to sleep. And we're gonna look at the last couple little things here. We're gonna plug in to the Blue Yeti. Anyways, it's pretty cool. And we're gonna wanna uh, see if we can get some heat. Obviously, we're gonna try to do our best to keep warm. So I got myself an electric heating blanket. We're gonna plug that in and we're gonna see how much uh, time we can get running with that. Uh, see maybe if we can get the evening out of it. Um, also, something that I had purchased from a while back, which I thought we could consider running is this, uh, this small heater. So I got this little Honeywell heater. Um, this one's a really low draw. Doing electrical heat is a, a really poor way to manage your, your heat. So um, it is what it is. Maybe if you had a larger unit, um, than what I'm running now would probably be good, but um, either that or maybe you could plug it into an electrical timer. So anyways, let's take a look here. So the unit still has, well, where it says about 80%. Uh, running a few different things earlier, we're down to 80%. So I'm gonna quickly plug in this heater and we'll just sort of see what kind of draw we get out of this thing. So this is obviously 10. We'll set this guy on low it's pulling quite a bit it's almost let's see well it's over 200 watts well i guess it's coming down maybe as the maybe as the element heats up it's gonna draw down lower that was a bit of a spike now we're leveling off here about you know 140 I'll, I'll run it for a few minutes and i'll check back here all right we'll check back in here so i've had this heater running for a few minutes now uh it's had a chance to warm up it's been pretty consistent right in the 140 zone so at 140 and we're only gonna have a few what is that going to be on a full charge? I guess we're probably only going to have, yeah, right around three, three and a half hours of heat time on that. Um, not super efficient. Um, although if you had a timer and you maybe uh, scheduled to run maybe 15 minutes every hour, you could definitely extend that. Yeah, so probably not the best way to heat, but if you had a larger unit, you definitely could run uh, run a heater like this. I wouldn't even consider putting it on high. That would probably just completely suck the power out completely. So anyways, let's check out the heating blanket. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is this is just a small pad. Um, I, You could do one of the blankets, obviously, much larger, uh, spread it out a little bit, but uh, this is what I had already in the house. Uh, tested out the wife's blanket. Uh, I just felt it was too big. I didn't really uh, think it was going to be a great one. So, anyways, I'll try out this heat pad. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? The first numbers. So immediately when we plug this guy in, it is pulling about 70 watts, which is considerably lower than the electric heater. And I do believe once this thing warms up, that it will actually the numbers will lower it down. So, anyways, let's just check back here in a few as well. Well, I crawled into the bed, and the heating pad is 
pretty nice actually <laughs> you can really feel it especially if feet were just like a little bit cold and just like right away you could feel that heat even if i only ran it for like five or ten minutes just to get that edge off definitely really nice let's take a look at the power consumption on this thing and just like i mentioned so anyways now that it's been on for a little bit it's only pulling about you know you can see there low 30s watts 29 30 31 32 in between there so at that rate that this thing will you know it'll run that thing for many many hours so um the heating pad has a timer in it it only runs for uh, three hour cycles anyways so if you woke up in the middle of the night at least three hours to get you going and get you sleeping maybe you don't even you know turn it back on but if you roll over in the middle of the night and it's cold you can just press the button and the heating blanket will come back on for another three hours so anyways that's it for me today time to get some sleep let's uh let's get uh, catch back up tomorrow and uh see see what we can get up to and uh, the adventure will continue good night I've had a great time this weekend testing out this Blue Eddy unit while I was camping and overlanding. If I've forgotten any of the information, you can most definitely check them out at blueeddypower.ca and blueeddypower.com. I will also leave some links in the description for you to check out as well. In the end, I'm very happy with the unit. My only regret is not having gotten one right from the beginning. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider giving me a like and thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.